Good morning. Thanks. It's always good to have an opportunity to worship with one another, worship our Father in heaven. If you're here, here in person, we're so thankful that you're here. We're, we're glad for your presence with us. If you're watching the recording online or watching it, uh, watching it live, again, just nice to have an opportunity to worship together. If you're visiting with us, we're so thankful that you're here. If you ever have any questions about what we do or why we do it, we ask you to talk to one of the uh, members or talk to one of the leaders. It's always our goal, number one, first and foremost, to, to worship, praise our Father in heaven in a way that's pleasing to him. So um, a couple of announcements before we start off our worship in prayer. Uh, there's something a brewing on Sunday nights. That was uh, Matt Zimmerman, and he, he said uh, that he could... Uh, uh, credit his mother-in-law for that. So we're studying the book of Hebrews on Sunday nights. Um, <laughs> Mark Beeler Sr. has been leading a class for our adults on Sunday evenings that start at 5 o'clock. Uh, so all, adult, all adults are invited to attend that. It goes from 5 to 545. And then there's also uh, some different opportunities some of the members are putting on uh, to meet at their houses afterwards. I know, Sarah, you're doing that, and that's appreciated. I, I don't know if other folks are going out to eat, but just an awesome time to, to get together on Sunday evenings and continue to study our scripture and then also have time for fellowship while the kiddos, um, teens, and Echoing Christ groups are meeting at that same time uh, here. So, uh, again, just want invite, to invite everybody. Please join that as you can, um, as you're able to. Also, um, October 8th is our Trunk or Treat, uh, always a great time of fellowship. It's, it's nice. Um, I feel like this is the first year where we've really been able to have a lot of these fellowship opportunities that we missed for a couple years because of COVID kind of happening again without restrictions. So again, it's just nice to, nice to have time just to spend with one another uh, in fellowship. Uh, all right. So as before we uh, kick off our worship, let's have a prayer together. Our Father, our God, it is always wonderful to be together as a family, Father. Having the opportunity to worship you and praise you and, and please you with that, God. We thank you for this family of believers that meets here. We thank you for its leadership. We thank you for the wisdom that you've provided, Bob and Danny, in, in leading this congregation. And we just we pray that you continue to be with them and provide them with that wisdom. Father, we thank you for all of our members where many folks are struggling with illnesses, struggling with different things in their lives, and just, Father, help us to be your hands and your feet as we minister to them. Help us, Father, to be lights in this dark world, particularly in this community, and we just we pray that in all things we do things that are pleasing to you and that honor you and glorify you. Father, we pray that this worship and praise this morning be pleasing to you that that our songs be uplifting that our that our time together be meaningful for each one of us and that you're glorified father last but not least if there's anyone here this morning that has not put on your son in baptism and that's ready to do so father we pray that they would know that there's no better time than now to do that we love you god we thank you so much for the sacrifice of your son so that we can be here together and, and worship and praise you and know that we have the hope that we have to be with you for eternity. It's your son's name I pray. Amen. If you're able, would you please stand and let's sing together, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know that my Redeemer
please be seated. <clears throat> How great thou art. The song before scripture in prayer, what a friend we have in Jesus.
with me, please. Father in heaven, we're thankful to have such a creator. Father, we're, we're thankful for you offering us your wisdom, your kindness, your mercy. Father, be with us as we go through this worship service. Help us to have our minds set on you. Help us to reflect on your love, your sacrifice for us. Father, we're so thankful that we can come together as a body. We're so thankful for the talents that you've given this congregation, Father. We're thankful for the teachers. We're thankful for the song leaders. We're thankful for those who are able to present your message. Father, we're thankful for everything that you've done for this congregation. Father, thank you for the young families. Help us to be an encouragement to the parents of young children. Father, thank you for your son who's died on the cross for us. We're thankful that we can, we can look to you for refuge. We're thankful that we can come out of the world and, and be a part of this, Father. We know we don't deserve your, your mercy. We don't deserve your grace, but you love us anyways. Father, thank you for the healing that we've seen with many of our sick. There's, there's still many who are suffering in several different ways. Father, we ask that you would be with them, that you would heal them if it's your will. We ask that you would use us as encouragement to them. Father, be with those who work to lead this congregation. We ask that you would guide them with your wisdom, Father. We love you so much. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. This morning's scripture will be from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. And the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent their disciples to him among with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness is, and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar what things that are Caesar's, and to God what things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. The song before communion and offering is, I am thine, O Lord.
Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, we're so thankful for today, the blessings of a new day, the blessings to gather to worship your precious name, Father, and be encouraged by one another's presence, Father. I ask that you help us to focus our hearts and our minds on the sacrifice of Jesus, his ultimate sacrifice of dying on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, dear Lord. We thank you so much for that sacrifice. Help us to remember that each and every day and to share the joy that we have because of Jesus with those that we come in contact with, Father. Please help us to always be thankful for all that you have done for us, Father, as we look forward to being with you in heaven one day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray again. Father, we thank you for your ultimate plan of salvation, for Jesus' blood once and for all, forgiving us of our sins, Father. I ask that you give us the strength to stand firm against the devil, Father, and our temptations that we face every day. Forgive us when we do fall short, Father. Please help us to walk faithfully with you, never letting go of your hand, Father. Forgive us, Father, and give us the strength to and do your will and do the things that we know that we should, Father, and resist the temptations when they come. Thank you for your son. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. We now have an opportunity to give back a portion of that which we have been richly blessed with. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for all of our many blessings, Father. What we deserve was death, but because of Jesus, we have eternal life with you in heaven, Father. Help us to reflect on our blessings at this time, Father, and give back a portion of which you have blessed us with, Father, so we may be your hands and feet here and fulfill your mission on earth, Father. And Help us not only to give back financially, but also of our physical and spiritual blessings that we may strengthen, uplift, encourage one another, and be a shining light in this community, Father, and all those that we come in contact with. Help us to share our love because of what you've done for us, Father. Thank you for all of our many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together Amazing Grace.
Pray with me, please. Father, we pray that you'll be with uh, Mary as she's had to take her mom to the hospital. She's unable to stand. Father, we pray that this is nothing serious. We pray that you'll be with the doctors that attend to her and they might be able to discern just exactly what her problem is. And Father, as we go through life, we're always grateful we can come to you in prayer. And if, Father, as we hear a message from your word this morning, I pray, Father, that you'll help us all to see how we can internalize it and be better Christians. Help us, Father, to listen with the intent of discerning what you want us to do in our lives and how you want us to live our lives. We're grateful for Jesus and we're grateful he went to the cross. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. I want to welcome you this morning. I know we have a number of visitors. And before you ask, I do not have leprosy. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff going on on the top of my forehead. I've been to the dermatologist. And if you've ever been there, they kind of go crazy with the stuff that kind of helps pull it off. Well, I went two weeks ago. Now everything is looking like it pulls off. So I'm a little bit self-conscious of that, but just to let you know on the front end. So in our text today, we want to talk about rendering what is due Caesar versus rendering what is due God. In our text in Matthew chapter 22, let's reread that. This is from the New Living Translation. Then the Pharisees met together to plot how to trap Jesus into saying something for which he could be arrested. Then he sent some of the disciples along with the supporters of Herod to meet him. Teacher, he said, we know that you are honest. You teach the way of God truthfully. You are impartial and don't play favorites. Now tell us what you think about this. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus knew their evil motives. You hypocrites, he said. Why are you trying to entrap me? Here, show me the coin used for the tax. When he handed him a coin, he asked, whose picture and title are stamped on it? Caesar's, they replied. Well, then, he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. His reply amazed them and they went away. I can tell you a few things about taxes, and maybe perhaps you can too. The person who was bothered by his conscience, the Internal Revenue Service received the following letter from a taxpayer. Dear sir, my conscience bothered me. Here is $175 which I owe in back taxes. There was a PS at the bottom of the letter which read, if my conscience still bothers me, I'll send the rest of it in. <laughs> and then there was the bad investment. During an IRS audit, the defendant was asked to explain a $5,000 write-off that was flagged. Bad investment. It seemed obvious to the man that was being audited. He explained, that $5,000 bad investment was my last year's taxes. And then some people would advise you uh, to invest your money into uh, taxes as that is the only sure thing that will continue to go up. And there was a movie that came out in 1998 called Meet Joe Black starring uh, Brad Pitt and Anthony Hopkins. Long movie, it's about three hours long. But anyway, the gist of that movie is, as they came through it, is that there's only two things certain in life, death and taxes. And to a certain degree, that's true. And isn't it funny, simply talking about taxes or money in general kind of causes us to shift maybe rather nervously in our seats. In fact, when we shift in our seats, when someone talks about money, we're just making sure that our wallet is still where it's supposed to be. 
Believe it or not, I can actually hear some of you think to yourself, thank goodness I didn't bring any money to church today. But on a serious note, this lesson is just as much for me as it is for you because it touches us at the root level of where we live our lives. Who are we to give our allegiance to? Do we give it to Caesar or do we give it to God? It's about our primary loyalties in life, about giving back to God what we owe him. Giving back, we'll notice in a minute, apodidomai is the Greek word, and it means to give back. Dennis the Menace was walking out of the church on a Sunday morning with his parents. And when they got to the back of the uh, auditorium, and when they met the minister, Dennis said, what are you going to do with my dad's quarter? <laughs> and J. Oswald Sanders said in a book, A Spiritual Clinic, money is one of the acid tests of character and a surprising amount of space is given to it in Scripture. Whether a man is rich or poor, observe his reaction to his possessions and you will have a revealing index into his character. You know, the New Testament has a lot to say about money. Jesus didn't avoid the subject of money. In fact, he welcomed every opportunity to speak about it. Sixteen of his 38 parables deal with how to handle money and possessions. That's almost half of the parables that Jesus taught. And in the Gospels, one out of ten verses, 288 in all, focus directly on the subject of money. While the entire Bible offers us about 500 verses on prayer and less than 500 on faith, it devotes over 200,000 verses to money and possessions. So the scriptures have a great deal to say about money. So let's turn our attention to the text we just read a moment ago. Jesus said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar and the things that are God to God. And you can also find parallel passages to this in Mark chapter 12 as, 12, as well as Luke chapter 20. And over the centuries, many Christians have based their attitudes toward government on this passage. Some have thought that Jesus' statement establishes two separate realms, Caesar's and God's, and that people should render to each what they ask for in their respective realms. Yet in the historical context, these words of Jesus had little to do with taxation or political authority in general. Jews in the first century paid several taxes. Ties to the temple, averaging about 21% a year. Custom taxes and taxes on land. The people identified as Jesus' opponents, they weren't questioning these taxes. Their question was more specific, just like, remember, last week we studied John's baptism. Was it from heaven or from men? And these guys are asking, notice, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? That's the issue at hand. They were talking about the annual payment of a tax to Rome who occupied the land and who worshipped false gods. And this tax could only be paid with Roman coins, which were just not legal tender, but also pieces of propaganda. And most of the coins contained an image of Caesar with the inscription of him being divine, as we just saw on that coin a minute, a minute ago. And one common phrase during the time of Jesus was Tiberius Caesar, August son of the divine Augustus, high priest. Well, this posed a problem for Jews as well as Christians because these graven images were blasphemy. So the tax in question was the annual tribute tax to Rome. And Jews were divided about this. The temple authorities, who kind of uh, were in line with the Herodians, didn't have an issue with it. They endorsed the tax. 
and they also enjoyed a pretty good kickback from the collected funds for their own personal use. But many of the Jews who rejected this tax and resisted it often got themselves in trouble because of it. And so the question put to Jesus by the Herodians was a trap, just like it was when we learned last week, a trap. Either a yes or a no answer would have gotten Jesus into trouble. Yes would have discredited him with those who found the imperial domination sense of system reprehensible and unacceptable. No would have caused him to be arrested for being a troublemaker. So notice, just like we learned in last week's story, Jesus avoided the trap with two moves. First, he asked his opponents for a coin. When they produced one, Jesus looked at it and said, whose image and inscription is on it? It was, of course, Caesar. And the coin bearing Caesar's image came room for that famous saying that we've looked at, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are God's. We can see that the testers were puzzled over the meaning of Jesus' word. The word render means to give back. In other words, with a dismissing shrug, Jesus said, it's Caesar's coin. And since it's Caesar's coin, you go ahead and give that coin back to Caesar. But when we come to the second half of that phrase, Jesus says, give back to God what belongs to God. What a dynamite second half of that that Jesus says. And this is a huge question that we have to grapple with. What belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God? And the Gospels tell us that the Herodians... And the Pharisees had every intention to ensnare Jesus. Now these guys would not be on the same page ordinarily, but they got on the same page as a team thinking they could entrap Jesus. But the answer that Jesus offers leaves us to figure out what we are to give back. As I mentioned earlier, the word in Give, and Jesus' answer means to give back. Apodidomai is a Greek word. The word was used in a sense of paying back a debt. The word carries the sense of giving that which already belongs to another person. The question that we have to answer and that we have to grapple with is how do we know what things belong to Caesar? Well, they have his image the new revised standard on them. The things that belong to Caesar has his very identifiable image as a sign. As an example, in the U.S., you and I, we pledge allegiance to the flag as a symbol of patriotism for undivided loyalty. Loyalty. And how do we know what things belong to God? They have God's icon. They have God's image on them as well. And notice this word icon, image, is used in the Greek translation of the Old Testament as early as Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make humankind in our icon, in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. And in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, this is the list of the descendants of Adam. When God created humankind, He made them in icon, in the likeness of God. And further in Genesis chapter 9, verse 6, for in His own image, God made humankind. We are to give to God the things stamped with God's image. That's us. We're stamped with God's image. 
We are to give God our whole selves, not just our part. I remember very distinctly, the year was 1974. My mother had asked me to go to church after being away for a long period of time. So I decided to go. And during the invitation that night, I don't know, God was moving in my life. And I came forward, got my life right back with God. But in order to give the whole self, that meant several things had to change, and nobody likes to change. That meant my hair, which was literally down to the middle of my back, had to change. That meant the bell bottoms that I wore had to change. That meant the speech that came out of my mouth that was not wholesome had to change. That meant that those associates that I spent my time with had to change. What fellowship does light had with darkness? That meant I had to change. I had to apodidomai. At that point, it wasn't mere lip service. I had to give myself back to God. And that's what he's asking us to do today. And how is it with you? You may be inclined to give God your mind, but your heart is far from Him. Or you may give God your heart, but you are unwilling to learn from His Word. You may be willing to give God your muscle, but remain unwilling to bring your body to worship or to fellowship or to study with other Christians. You may be content to give God one or two hours a week, but God wants apodidomai. God wants 168 hours a week. And you may be content to give 2% of your income, maybe 10%, maybe 100%. But God wants that 100%. God wants apodidomai when we give back to Him. We cannot say that this part belongs to God, so I will give it to God. But this area of my life, God, stay out of it. You don't have any business being in it. You and I were created in God's image. We are to give Him our all because we represent the very nature of God. We are the icon. We are the image of God. Everything we are and everything we have belongs to God. Everything we are and everything we have, we are to apodidomai, give back to God. You see, we are but mere managers or stewards to these gifts that God has given to us. And let's imagine for a moment how this would play out if we gave our entire being to God. Our homes would not be merely a private place for ourselves, where we rest from our day's work, and where we eat and sleep. Our homes would be places of healing that would welcome men, weary travelers. They would be sanctuaries that offer comfort, peace, and encouragement and acceptance to others. And our families would not only be a bunch of people who share the same bathroom and fight over the remote control. Our families would be centers of worship, where godly values are shaped and molded and where unconditional love, understanding, and forgiveness are lived out. And our possessions, our cars, our houses, our businesses, our bank accounts, the countless toys we have would not be the things that bring us value. We would not try to keep up with the Joneses, but rather we would use all our material assets to glorify God. The use of everything we own comes back to the image we have been given by the Creator Himself. We give to God 
Because we are God. We are God's. He has created us to worship Him, to reflect the radiance of His love, His compassion, and His friendship. And I know this hits close to home. It hits close to home for me just as it much does to you. But I want to challenge you this week as you go out that you apodidomai, that you give yourself back to God, not in some things, and not in just in the things that you like, but you apodidomai. You apodidomai back to your spouse. You apodidomai to those who are in positions of authority, whether you like it or not. We are to give back to God what belongs to Him. Render unto God that which belongs to God. Give Him your life and let every moment of your life be an act of worship to God for His glory. How is it with you this morning? Are you apodidomai? Have you been giving your life to God? Or have you let everything else in the world get in the way of that? It's easy to do. If you need help giving your life back to God, won't you come this morning through faith, repentance, confession, being immersed in that watery grave of baptism so you can start anew to give your life back to God. If you have a need, won't you come right now as we stand and as we sing. <clears throat> Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, the heavenly like to welcome everyone here today, especially if you're visiting with us. Good to see that we have a number of visitors here today. And I don't really consider Ron and Pat visitors here, but it's great to have you home. Uh, as Danny mentioned in his prayer, 
Mary Sue took her mother to St. Charles this morning. Uh, there's something wrong with her leg and she can't stand, so we need to remember her in our prayers. Also, we need to remember George Crabtree, the father of Stephanie Hasidakis. Uh, he needs our prayers as the doctors assess his current health issues. Debbie Hyman is in room 131 at Orchard Villa for rehab. Jasper Lucas is responding favorably to his cancer treatments. It's good to see Pay Kay Payne here today. Uh, she's at Orchard or Landings of Oregon in room 107. She does appreciate visits and cards. There's a long list of others in the bulletin that need our prayers. So if you haven't picked up one of those, please do so. And remember all of these people in our prayers. There's a card in the back from Debbie Jeffers that reads, I want to thank you all so much for your prayers, cards, calls, and texts during my knee surgery. They meant so much. I'm so thankful for each of you. Thank you, Debbie Jeffers. As Chris announced, there will be a trunk or treat uh, on October 8th, and next Sunday night, the junior devotional will be working on ornaments for the packages that are going to be sent to Haiti. So see Christy or Whitney if you have questions about that. Let's go to our Father in prayer. God, you're such an awesome God, and you do so much for us. Father, we're thankful that we're children of yours, that you give us so many blessings, that you hear our prayers. And Father, we have need those that are in need of your healing hand, Father, we ask that you be with Mary Sue's mother. We ask that you be with George Crabtree, Debbie Heinemann, Jasper Lucas, and Kay Payne. And Father, we have many others that need your healing hand on them. Father, it's our prayer that they can return to their normal health if it be your will. Father, we thank you for the ways that we're able to serve you, for the different abilities that you've given us. And Father, we, look, we ask that you help us to look for ways to spread your message. Father, we're thankful for the missionaries that serve around the world that are taking your message to the lost. Father, be with us in the activities that we have here. Help us to take advantage of the class times that we have to study your word. Help us to study your word at home. Father, help the parents to study with their children, to teach them your ways. Father, we're thankful that your son came to this earth, that he lived and died for us, that he went to the cross. Father, we think of the suffering and the shame that he endured for each and every one of us. Father, help us to remember that every day of our lives. Help us to live each day the way you would want us to live. Help us to show your love to the people around us. Father, it's through your son's name that we pray. 
Amen. And please now stand for our closing song. There's not a friend like the Lord.